I'm going to be sharing my screen on Zoom. It's my first time doing this on conference, so please bear with me. We're going to talk cross-chain DeFi. The title of the, of the talk was a little bit long, so I put it in for the presentation here. Because um, again, I mean, we are uh, we're a lending platform, so everything I'm going to talk about today really only registers in the context of DeFi lending platform, like a stablecoin platform, exactly like what we are. We're going to start by explaining like simply what we do at Nemo. Um, what like what exactly is Nemo and how and why we manage different chains? Because well, it's nice to talk about cross chain, but there should be a reason behind. And well, we hope we will be able to convey uh, what we're doing here and the why because why well, it matters, right? So what do we do? We're a decentralized real stable coin that is minted against collateral, and all the parameters of the platform are governed with a single governance token. So let me roll it back simply. Um, it allows to solve a problem, to solve a problem that is, I have collateral, I have something that is volatile, that might go up. I mean, um, our host was talking a little bit earlier about the nice pump that Phantom had earlier. Well, you have a lot of tokens that pump, you don't want to sell them, and yet you want to enjoy their liquidity. DeFi lending platforms help with that. They allow you to lock collateral in a form of a Bolts, which is a smart contract structure, right? And against these collaterals that you deposit in the vault, you meet a stable coin, a form of a debt that you have to the protocol. The stable coin that you meet on Nemo is a euro stable coin, because we have seen in the market that there was a un, really unmet demand for a euro stable coin, and we decided to we decided to attempt it. Right? So Nemo again allows people to mint collateral, uh, to mint stablecoin against collateral. And all these, all the parameters of this operation, such as how much can you borrow to the protocol, depending on how much collateral you deposit, which collateral types the protocol does accept and all that does accept, are governed and really decided by the community, the community of Nemo holders via, via um, a simple voting system. The voting system it allows people with more tokens to, to have more voting power and people with uh, who are willing to, let's say, to have more voting power without more tokens have the ability to stake tokens for, let's say, a certain a given amount of time as a, as a form of, a, of trust to the protocol to say, well, I am willing to forego uh, my ability to move my tokens for, let's say, two years. In exchange, can I have some voting power? Well, this is this is what we did, right? We didn't invent this model. Uh, I think Curve did. Anyways, it became pretty standard in blockchain because it allows to align incentives of voters and long-term believers in the platform. So, well, this is what Nemo does. And if you can, if you imagine the way uh, a platform like that works, you imagine that there is like supply, there's demand um, for for a stable coin, but there is also a couple of things to manage and. If you want a product to serve as many users as possible, this, this product can not only be on Ethereum. We've seen, um, I mean, we, we've seen early this year that the fees were extremely high. And well, there's a reason why this, this conference and Phantom Developer Conference is big, is that there is interest for different chains today. And this is this is to us crucial that you you, you have a cross-chain like strategy for not only deploying but also recording in platform. progress so where are we trying to go right um we're trying to have a widespread liquid and liquid stable point we're trying to turn users of the platform into owners on each album and we're trying to have something that is simple to admin something that is safe because complexity makes things um, really difficult to secure. It's, it's no secret that the more complex a platform, while the, the, the more moving parts, the, the more difficult it will be to audit and secure it. So we're trying to reduce complexity as we go, but still have as many L1s as possible. Um, I mean, which makes sense for us. So we won't go on every L1, but we will go on, we want to go on each L1 that makes sense. Therefore, we need to have something simple, something simple to admin again, to have it uh, as safe as possible. So, what are the economics of a decentralized stablecoin? You have the supply, 
which is um, where the tokens are coming from, right? You have the daemon, which is, um, well, the daemon for the stable coin. So in, in those words, like in a platform like ours, it does mean how do you make sure that the token is usable? Like how do you make it so that the people who mint your token will, will not be, be in trouble? How do you maintain the price? How do you ensure that there, there, there will be, um, that the token will be working for anybody who means it. And the good thing is that in DeFi, you tend to work with incentives when you have things that you need to work on. Like DEXs incentivize taking liquidity, um, like in lending platforms incentivize either borrowing or providing liquidity for a token. At MIMO, we need to incentivize both sides, both sides because, well, this is, this is a way to maintain a healthy ecosystem. The parameters that the MIMO governs, uh, that the MIMO token governs, again, our, our uh, governance token is called MIMO. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I thought it was self-explanatory, but it's the first time we're writing like that in the conversation, so um, I'm letting you know. So MIMO, all caps, is our governance token. MIMO, no cap, not caps, is the name of our platform. So all those things that I just explained, all the, the economics of the token need to be uh, need to be governed, uh, I mean, need to have parameters that, that are governed by the governance token. What does it exactly mean? Simply, which collateral do we accept, right? Uh, in order to meet this, the, this stable point, like how do we manage the supply here? And how, like which, how much do we incentivize the, this supply? So which collateral do we accept and how, how much do we incentivize this? Or things that you govern using the minimal governance token. You have a proposal that would say, well, every day there will be X Nemo tokens that are given to people who just mint PAR. PAR is the name of our stablecoin. And you could also have, well, there's an AMM pool somewhere that trades PAR for ETH. We do believe that if this pool is big, it will help PAR be liquid and therefore um, increase the demand for a stablecoin. All right, let's incentivize it and let's give to everybody, everybody who is willing to stake ETH and PAR in a, in a, let's say, a balance pool, let's, let's give them so, a certain amount of MIMO token every day. So then you do turn the users into owners of the platform because, again, the, the, um, the owners of the platform are the MIMO token holders, and you incentivize supply and demand. So those are the parameters that MIMO needs to govern. However, the, um, we were not 100% there in, in terms of fully decentralized governance. Like, Yes, that's true that the MIMO token holders are the owners of the platform, but we are we did not fully um, decentralize the platform yet. We consider that there are three stages to this, like it starts by being all centralized. And then, well, we can we, we use snapshots for for votes on proposals, but we still centralize the, the deployment of each proposal. And after that, you can be like fully decentralized. We are uh, between the second and third, uh, third step here. But still, uh, we do not bring on uh, any code or any, any update to the protocol that is not voted by, by the MIMO token holders. So it's effectively working like it's free, except it's, it's not fully there yet. It's, um, it, it is a transition phase. Now, well, after explaining how this whole platform works, it's, uh, it's important to, to, to know about like, how can we make it work cross-chain, right? Um, we are the Phantom Developer Conference, we're an Ethereum protocol, you might be wondering what we're doing here. Well, um, the whole point is to explain like, well, like how do you make this, this whole thing work cross-chain, like this whole incentive distribution, um, the, this whole like uh, DeFi platform, how do we make it work cross-chain? So you have several potential solutions, right? Um, a solution would be to deploy only the token, only the stable coin. But this does not really serve the users. Because if we go back to what we are trying to achieve here is to help people use their assets better, which means give better use to your collateral. And if we only deploy the, the stable coin, well, that's cool, but that will be a stable coin on every chain. But there will not be any, anybody that benefits from um, 
from from the platform because people would not have another way to log their collateral. So again, it's not it's not really convenient for users. Nobody is willing to help. There's no incentives around. It, it's it, it is not to me to us. It will just not be a story. It will not be the main story. But then we could fork our protocol and deploy it totally independently for exchange. But it will not be the simplest to govern. We will need to have a separate governance system everywhere. And the MIMO token holders would only be, like, be responsible for one platform. How would you vote on another platform? You would need to have another governance token for each platform. Some people do that very successfully with different projects and it tends to, it tends to work. However, well, the MIMO token holders have placed their trust in our way to do things. And to us, it would not be fair to them. So we are in we are we really are in the business of trying to increase the power of Nemo token holders. We want Nemo token to be powerful enough to govern a protocol across different chains. So we can redeploy everything using the same governance token and incentive model. This is what we decided to do. So on each chain, we have a total redeployment, but we have a centralized configuration. And this is this is what is pretty much interesting here. You, you do have a voting system that is present on Ethereum um, at, at first. On this, on this you, you do explain simply, okay, we would like to have um, a certain amount of, of our governance token every day that are given to chain A and then another proportion that are given to chain B. Within the deployment on that chain or chain A or chain B, you have a normal, like um, the, the normal distribution model that happens again, like the supply side and the demand side and, and, and everything uh, that the platform needs. So it just works like a, a simple bucket of water that is filling every day that is simply distilled among all the chains where we distribute it. Today we're on Polygon and uh, Ethereum, but we are, we are as, as we speak, deploying on more chains. The token distribution, again, goes from Ethereum, then is bridged on each chain and distributed to the other of the other chain. The, the whole point here is that there is no, um, there, there is no second class citizen. We, we do believe that no matter which chain you're, you're, you're using, which L1 you're coming to, you should not be treated as, oh, yeah, but we, uh, we are, let's say, we're a Polygon uh, user, so we won't have the same rights as the, uh, as the Ethereum users. No, it should not be the case. Uh, we started on Ethereum, but the deployment should really be the same. It should, it should not be any single point of failure, and there should be no second class citizen. If you want your users to feel respected, we do believe this is the right way. So the ongoing deployment we have right now is on Compound. Well, there's no surprise why we're speaking here. So we're adding FTM as collateral, right? It means that we will provide one more way uh, for the for the FTM token holders to use their liquidity without having to sell their precious FTM token. Well, it's great because it popped yeah, it popped recently, but it's uh, we, we all here believe that uh, the token is great and we, we're not really exactly trying to sell any right now. So it will, we do believe that we're serving something convenient by allowing people to meet Euro stable tokens against their FTM as a collateral. What we're using for the bridge is multi-chain and for liquidity, again, we need AMM pools. Then good thing is that we will be able to use stable pool as soon as, uh, as, as, soon as we have per factory on Phantom. From a business perspective, what it means is that each L1 are treated for us like nodes in the graph. Even though today, because the bridge all go from Ethereum to, to, to the node, it is, um, it, it is mostly a, you know, like a directed graph. It's not exactly a graph that goes both ways, but still um, that allows us not to have single points of failure. It's, uh, if the bridge is at an issue, well, it's, uh, we, we can still act, can still, uh, can still manage the, the, the rest of the, of the deployment without much of an issue because all the problems are, are kept by the bridges that we have. And even if a bridge has an issue, or if a chain has an issue, the rest of our deployment should be safe, which allows us to, to deploy with a minimum, minimal amount of risk. And the MIMO token holders are in total control of where to put the incentives, which can align them with what they want to do with other communities. 
and it can allow uh, it can allow to, to have like pretty interesting like um, like schemes such as incentivizing new AMM, new AMM pools every time we go on a, on, on a new chain and the MIMO token holders can decide that while well, this chain is a priority, let's go and, and put all of our incentives there, and stuff like that. We really have a fluid management for the growth of the ecosystem and the growth of the tokens. So it's it's a good way to for us to meet users where they are and link with the communities as we go on, on different chains. So where we can go, where are we going from there? Like it's it's um, if, if you've been listening to, since the beginning of the talk, you realize that every time we go on a chain, we we do need to have a couple of things. We need to have, um, let's say, an oracle for prices because we well, we mint stable coins and we need to know the price of, of the assets that we mint against, or we can be exploited. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do pricing on chain, or you can use an oracle. And this is what we're doing. We use an oracle here. So we need an oracle uh, with a euro price feed, ideally, on every chain we go. And that's that's the first, let's say, the first difficult part uh, on what we're doing. Another difficult part is that we need AMM pools everywhere we go. Ideally, a pool that allows very little steepage between stable coins uh, or normal stable pool. So there could be a quality chain tomorrow that comes up with great code, and we would be very slow to deploy there because we have to wait for the ecosystem. It's not really uh, the, the best solution. So we might go for stronger vertical integration in order to serve users better everywhere we go, which means we might integrate uh, some parts of the protocol uh, into, into the protocol. We might integrate some larger parts that, 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 that do, we do need in order to be everywhere. And well, um, today again, we, we have Snapchat to aggregate the votes of, our, of the community, but it is still difficult for people to actually understand what's going on, to understand like the, the incentives. It's not really properly viewed and displayed, uh, even though our team does a, does a great job at doing stuff on, on our page, on the mining page, for people to understand where the incentives are going. It could be easier to have a, a proper protocol governance app. And we do believe that if you want to have a proper cross-chain governance, you want to have something over multiple chains. If we actually want to empower users, we need to give them easy tools. So this is this is to us uh, what's what's clearly what's clearly to come. There are there are a couple of challenges that we that we've had to fix in order to make this a reality. Um, it, it was not really trivial to to define this this scheme of having the issuance of the stable uh, of the not the stable coin but the governance token on um, there like on the top and having it ready to flow between uh, between the chains. But we believe we, we've done something that is scalable and we wanted to share with you guys today. So just as a recap, uh, I've, I've taken some slides from uh, the technical explanation about the topic given by my, my CTO yesterday, uh, or our CTO, Bad. So I'm, I'm gonna show you this slide just for, uh, because I, I do believe they constitute a great summary to what we just shared. Starting with a single chain distribution where um, we have the MIMO token that is on one chain. Let's, let's say that all the gray cubes represent the Ethereum. One chain distribute the MIMO token on the supply side and the demand side, what we talked about a bit earlier. And then moved to having different distributors. So we say, okay, well, let's treat Ethereum just like one more chain. So we have an Ethereum distributor and for each chain, we do have a chain distributor. And we, we manage the supply and the demand on that chain. So the distributor on the top, the MIMO distributor, which is the original bucket that I was talking about, is, is really the source of all those things. And as we keep growing chains, we just add distributor. So we have, um, let's say, a Phantom distributor now today that we're working on ATM, um, on Phantom, Polygon distributor, again, like the, um, in purple here, blue there, and still great for Ethereum. So, this, what we wanted to discuss today is a scalable architecture that allows um, a very low risk way to keep your governance token holders happy and to make your, let's say, your ops administration very, like, very simple. Thank you very much. And I will now uh, stop sharing my screen if I manage, <laughs> if I manage, I manage to do this. Got it.